Hey, what's up? Today I'm gonna talk about the big ass 486. The this is the same 486 that I've shown in like the Gravis ultrasound videos that I've done. Uh, I've never done a video on this computer on its own. I've mostly just used it to test like other cards and install other shit into it. But today I'm gonna actually just tell the story of how I built that thing. And uh, it's actually one of my favorite computers that I own. I love it. And uh, it was one of the most difficult builds I've done, mostly because of the case modifications I had to do. But I'm really excited to talk about it today, and this is going to be part of the 486 build-off series, which a lot of other friends of mine are doing. Definitely check out their videos as well, there's going to be some great stuff in there. So yeah, without further ado, here's the story of the big-ass 486. Enjoy! So, when I was a kid, I had two 486s. The one from my 486 tour that I made a while ago, and the other one which used to be at my dad's office. One day when I was at school, my dad threw the 486 from the office in the trash without telling me, and the garbage truck came and hauled it away before I realized it. When I found out, I was devastated, and I missed it so much ever since. I stuck with DOSBox after that. But then in 2016, LGR made a video about building a 486 for his capture footage, and it really made me miss the 486 and old computers in general. That video pretty much single-handedly got me back into vintage computing, like 15 years after the 486 was trashed. I then ran to the storage and dug out the other 486 which luckily was not thrown away, and I restored that. It was amazing seeing all my old games and desktops still in the same organization that it was in when I was like 4. But while I enjoyed that computer a lot, I also really wanted to replace the one that was lost, and I wanted to build it myself. And that turned out to be quite a damn journey with many ups and downs, and it turned out so good in the end. So here's how I did it. It all started with this case here. I found someone on eBay who had 5 of these new old stock and while they were expensive I wanted to get one before they completely sold out. I pulled the trigger on this one and as a new old stock case it was sparkly clean and goddamn gorgeous. It also came with a box full of parts that I needed for the case such as rear slot covers, screws, standoffs and such. The power switch was missing but I was able to source one which matched the case perfectly and resembled the one on my old 486 that was thrown out. I then bought this motherboard which is amazing for a VLB system. It came with a DX266 and 16 megabytes of RAM just like I wanted. I made sure it had the CR2032 because these don't leak like the Varda shits used on many other 386 and 486 boards. Before I started putting the parts together, I needed to prepare the case and modify it which was by far the hardest part of this project. This 486 used a different form factor of power supply than the standard AT size and I had no way of fitting this smaller one in here without some modifications. What I ended up doing was removing this small bracket from the case and bolting it to the top of the power supply cover and mounting the PSU upside down so that the power connector lined up with this opening here. The back of the case looks janky as fuck due to this, but it's worked th this way for three years now and it's all, all that matters really to me. After that I needed to connect the power supply to the power switch, which was quite scary because I didn't have a guide for this one. Thankfully some friends of mine online helped me out and sent me diagrams and explained the way these worked, and I got the power supply to power on first try. Next thing I needed was to do the megahertz display programming, and this is always a pain in the ass. This case came with a diagram, but this turned out to not match the display that I had in the case, so I just had to trial and error this damn thing as usual. After all this, it was finally time to start the build. This 486 went through several different video cards, but the one it started off with was this S3805 VLB card with 1MB of video memory. In its final state, the computer ended up with a VLB Cirrus Logic CLGD5428 based card rather than the S3 though. The sound card was a Sound Blaster 16 CT1770, just like the one I have in my other 486, and the I.O. controller is a UMC based card with VLB. I wanted to include a 3.5 inch floppy drive and a CD-ROM drive in this system and while the floppy cable was able to reach the drive from the controller, the CD-ROM drive was not due to it sharing the same IDE cable as the hard drive. And so for a long time I just didn't have a CD-ROM drive in this system. One of the downsides to building in a full tower. But that wasn't too big of an issue since I was using an SD card as a hard drive which I can easily transfer files onto from a modern computer. After the computer was all built and set up with MS-DOS on the SD card, I was getting a weird problem with the CMOS settings. They just weren't being saved, and every time I left the computer off for like 30 minutes, it would forget my hard drive settings, forcing me to re-enter the geometry every time I turned it back on. I was completely stumped over what was happening, and this went on for months. 
I checked so many things on the board and even desoldered the battery holder to see if there was anything wrong with it, but it looked totally fine. The actual issue turned out to be that one of the diodes near the battery was shattered and the other was cracked, like the two of them had issues. I was glad I found this issue at last, but I had no idea what I would replace them with. I desoldered both of them and they just broke the moment I got them out. I'm not an electrician at all, so I just researched the shit out of diodes in order to determine what types to use, and ended up settling on using just normal 1N914 diodes, and those worked perfectly. The 486 was now saving the CMOS properly, and I had a badass full tower 486 that I was super excited to use. About a month later, I managed to get myself a Gravis ultrasound and replaced the Sound Blaster 16 with it. I loved playing tracker music on this thing, and games like Jazz Jackrabbit, Epic Pinball, and One Must Fall sounded amazing with it. But I couldn't help but think it would be even better to get both the Gus and SB16 in here to have the best of both worlds. For the longest time, I thought it was impossible. But I saw that some people on Vogons had managed to get it working, and I so badly wanted to do that with this 486. It took me years to figure out the solution to this, but it ended up being very simple. I just needed a later version of the ultrasound initializer. With Ultra Init version 2.31, this did the trick, and I documented the entire process of this setup in another video a while ago. I also managed to find a long ass IDE cable, which finally was able to reach the CD ROM drive, and after this, the big ass 486 was fully functional. This is probably my favorite computer that I own, and I have an awesome monitor to use it with and a Roland MT32 I can hook it up to, and a shitload of amazing AT mechanical keyboards I can use with it. Another thing I did was I installed Windows 3.1 onto this computer, and going through that setup was very cool. Uh, when I finished installing Windows 3.1, I arranged it into the four quadrants, which is how it looked on my 386 when I was younger, and I really love the way this looks. This is very nostalgic to me. I even added all the extra programs that I had on there, like all the obscure little games and programs I had on the 386. Got them all on here and it looks really nice, uh, including with like Microsoft Arcade and Ski Free and all that stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much my whole story of this computer. Now I'm just gonna hook it up, record some direct capture and demonstrate it for you. Enjoy! First I'm going to demonstrate the Gravis ultrasound by playing some games that support it, then some tracker music, and then maybe a demo, like Second Reality or something. Then I'm going to show you the Sound Blaster after that with like Doom and other games, just to demonstrate how both of these cards work simultaneously in the same system. Come here. Beat it. Ouch! 
me who I am. trying to play Tyrion on Lord of Game difficulty there, that shit's impossible. Anyway, that's about all I have for you today, I hope you enjoyed watching, I enjoyed making this video a lot, it's really fun, I really am glad I got to show the big ass 486 on the channel at last, it's one of my favorite computers, probably my favorite of all time honestly, love that thing. I hope this inspires people to build, you know, more retro computers, because they're great. Anyway, take care, I'm about to play some Tyrion, have a nice day, see you next time.